Today we are going to look over the AlphaWise U20 low-cast 3D printer. Gearbest told me this is one of the most sold low-cast 3D printers for the last months, so I agreed to make a review on this one as well. This printer it seems to be competing with the CR10 from Creality, being in the same section of low-cast 3D printers, in case of this one with a price of around 240 euros and the same printing size as the CR10. So let's see if that's true and this printer could compete with the CR10 which we already reviewed on this channel. We will make an unbox, see what and how we receive inside of the box, I will mount the printer, give it some tests and give my first opinion about this printer. Before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. The box that I received is huge, but of course the printer is also big. Inside of the cardboard box we have two layers, all wrapped in the common white foam. It seems they did a nice job packaging this kit. It is all tight and well protected, and later we will see if we have any shipping damage. We have the bottom part of the printer pre-assembled with the heated bed and everything else. All we have to do is to later join these parts of the printer together because everything is ready. Then we have the top part of the printer with the extruder. We have the main electronics case and another smaller cardboard box. So after the unbox you will end up with this. The printer parts, the manual and the small cardboard box. Inside of this box we first have a 200 grams spool of PLA filament that we will use later for tests. Then we have the plastic parts for the spool holder that we have to mount, and we will also do that later. Then we have the power cable and the USB cable for the printer. Ok next we have all the tools that we need to assemble this printer and the metal brackets with all the needed screws. Finally we have the common SD card that we will use to print. So this is all that you get inside of the box, so that's it for the unbox. All the parts arrived well. There are no bad parts or broken connectors, broken glass, cables or so on. So we are now ready to assemble the printer. As in case of the Creality CR10, all we have to do is to put the top part on top of the bottom part and using just 4 screws we join these parts together. You also have these tabs in the provided manual. After that we add the metal brackets on each side and tie the screws and the body of the printer is ready in just a minute since it arrives almost 100% pre-assembled. Now that the frame is ready, next part is to take the electronics case and plug all the motors and end stop switches. Each cable has labels, so you can't get them wrong. I first plug the heated bed and the extruder cables onto the back of the case. Plug all the step motors and all the end stops. Now all the connectors are plugged. On the other side get the plastic parts for the spool holder and mount it. And that's it, now the printer is ready in just a couple of minutes, just right out of the box. I plug the power cable and turn the printer on for the first time. To control this printer we will use a touch screen. First thing that I do is to level the bed. For that I go to options and I select auto home. I also preheat PLA and I do the leveling as always with the paper for each corner of the bed. Once the printer is leveled I insert the PLA filament. Make sure the nozzle and the bed are hot and insert the SD card with a Benchy file for my first test. In the menu select print from the SD card and the printer starts printing. Have in mind this is the first print after a few minutes of the unbox with no extra changes of the settings. The first bench was pretty decent, but we have a few errors on the bottom side of the boat. Then we have only perfect layers on the middle part of the boat and on the chimney once again we have errors. So I figured out that the problem was the free sample filament. When I sliced the benchy file I used the same setting as for my usual PLA filament. Once I changed that filament I had perfect prints. The layers are perfect. No loose filament and perfect shape. Also increasing a little bit the temperature with the free sample of white PLA material I was able to print good parts as well. The final benchy turned out impeccable with perfect layers using 0.4mm nozzle and 0.2mm layer height. 
I've also printed this bullet, with white PLA material, and it turned out ok once again, with good layers even with the white PLA sample. Also to test for small parts, I've printed this DNA example, and the angle test. As you can see, this part is very small, banana for scale. But even so, the small layers turn out ok. Both prints turn out very good, even with thin prints and up to 75 degree angle. I've also printed this vase, using spiral print, and as you can see the printer made a good job, so spiral vase printing also works ok. So guys, as print quality, we can get very good results. I've also tested ABS at higher temperature and had no problems with that neither. I've printed this fax using pearl white ABS filament and it turned out great. Also using nylon, I was able to print this tower part and once again I had no problems and the print turned out ok just as the other parts. I've also tested flexible filament at low speed. I was able to print this common flexible bracelet. So guys you could perfectly print with PLA, ABS, nylon and flexible filament and changing the settings you could get better results each time. Ok so I had this printer for a few weeks and I've tested different materials, but let's talk about the build of this machine. First thing first, it has a printing area of 300 by 300 mm and a height of 400 mm and is the same size as the CR10 or the TiVo Tornado. The bed has a very thick printing glass that has both smooth surface on one side but also a built tech type surface on the other side, so this is a nice thing to have so you could decide on which part to print or maybe print directly on the aluminum plate. The power supply of this printer is a 24 volts one, so heating up will be a little bit faster. Now the bed is huge but it could still reach decent temperatures. Ok so basically the entire body is made out of 2040 and 2020 aluminum bars and together with the metal brackets and thick screws you get a very strong and stiff body. And that's very important because with the wombly body you will get vibrations and not that good prints. To control the machine you have a decent sized touchscreen and as I said in other review I'm a fan of the touchscreen. It seems to me to work faster than the rotating knob. A nice thing is that this printer has a power resume function, which means that even if you power off the printer or you have disconnected the cable by mistake, when you power it on you will be asked if you want to continue. The machine will heat up, then will home the X and Y axis and continue the print. This is a very nice feature to have especially for large prints since you don't want to lose a 10 hour print just because there was a power down or you disconnected the cable by mistake. The printer also has a filament detector. This little switch will detect if you run out of filament and it will pause the print till you insert the new filament. Once the printer detects there is no more filament, the nozzle goes to the minimum X position and you will get a message on the screen. Just go in the menu and retrieve some filament in order to remove it if you want. Then just add the new filament and press the resume button on the screen and the print will continue. Now I really don't like the cable plastic protection tube. It is very hard and difficult to bend, so it looks quite ugly and always stays in the way of the axis movement. I really prefer the material type of cable cover as the CR10 has. This looks a lot better and has better movability. The printer has only one lead screw and one step motor on the back with a bearing on the top part of the printer to keep that in place. The printer is quite big, so maybe it should have a dual lead screw. Anyway, the CR10 has only one motor for the Z-axis as well and never gave me problems for that. So the rest of the printer is pretty much the same as the CR10. The heated bed is the same size, but we do receive this interesting very thick printing glass with both smooth surface and built tech type material. And to be honest, prints will stick very well to this surface, but I don't know how long this will last and how to change it if it gets old. The nozzle block is also the same as the CR10, and it's inside of this metal case next to the cooling fan. The design looks quite well. To extrude material, this printer has a Bowden system and the extruder seems to be made out of plastic that was mold injected, and it seems to be quite strong. Next to this we have the filament detector. Now the case with the electronics seems to be the same size as the CR10 but it has a color touchscreen on the top, instead of the simple LCD. 
Since the last 3D printers of this year had the electronics case below of the printer, I'm not anymore a fan of the case on the side of the printer. This will just occupy too much space and the wires between the case and the printer will always make a mess. Since this one is a new model, I would really like to have the electronics below the frame as the CR20 or the Ender 3. Ok, let's open the electronics case. Just remove a few screws and it will open. Inside, as I said before, we have the power supply of 24 volts and 15 amps. I can see proper cables and insulation for all the connectors. It also has a switch and a fuse for safety inside of the switch. On the other part of the case, we can see the TFT display and the main board. I can see there is a big heat dissipator for the heated bed MOSFET. Now the stepper drivers are soldered to the main board, below these heat sinks. I really prefer the board with separated drivers, in case just one gets damaged. So that's it for the teardown of the electronics case. Ok guys, so also the spool holder will be better directly on the electronic case as the CR10 has one. Because in this way we would need a very big table for the printer. Space for the electronics case, then the spool holder, then the printer. And to be honest, I really don't like this pool holder. So that's it. The rest of the printer is the same. Same metal body that is very strong with metal brackets everywhere. We have metal brackets for both sides of the Z axis, on the front part for the Y axis, on the top part for the lid screw and also the support of the heated bed is made out of thick metal and that's a good thing in order to get good prints. Extra features that this printer has are the power print resume option where the printer will continue the print after it was turned off and also the filament detector and the different printing glass. On the other side, the wires cover is ugly and I don't like that. Another downside of this printer is the use of a non-open source code. The firmware of this printer is made by Gearbest and we don't have the source. This printer had some problems in the past with the heating staying always on even after the printing process was done and other small errors while printing long prints. But the new version seems to have solved those problems. If you don't get the last version, go to the Facebook group of this printer and download the latest version. It is very easy to install. I've used the printer for a few prints for now and I had good results, pretty much the same quality as the CR10. On the other hand, I've seen that this printer had some problems with older version of the firmware so I could expect for future errors as well, let's hope not. So we have a metal body, 24 volts power supply for faster heating, V-shaped roller so the movement is very smooth, the printer is a bit quieter than the CR10, good prints, metal brackets, color touchscreen, Bowden extrusion system, thick printing glass with double side surface and nice design. This was my opinion of this printer things that I like and things that I don't. But I think the best thing about this printer is the price, only 240 euros for the same printing area as the CR10, metal body and also a few improvements. I have almost a year with the CR10 with no problems, so I still prefer the CR10, but at the same time I can definitely recommend you the AlphaWise U20 as well. So we have seen the unbox, assembled the printer, made a few tests with different materials, also a teardown of the electronic case and I shared my first opinion of this printer. If you want to buy one, you have the coupons below of this video, it would be a really great gift for this Christmas. I hope that you've made a general idea of the AlphaWise U20 3D printer and that this video helped you. If so, make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. I would like to wish you happy holidays, so thanks again and see you later guys.